What is up, everybody? Welcome into episode two of Chris and Company. I'm not going to keep you guys waiting for very long. Put the word out on Twitter asking Tiger pitcher Tarek Skubal if he wanted to be on Chris and Company. He said yes. We're going to jump right to that interview right now. Before we do that, though, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, follow us on all of these platforms, as well as following me on Twitter at Castellani2014. Let's get to our interview with Tarek Skubal. We are joined by Detroit Tigers pitcher, former top prospect, American League Pitcher of the Month, September 2023. Do, do you get a plaque for that? I actually did get a cool little, uh, like a, yeah, like a, it was like a circle. They shipped it in a cool little box. It's actually pretty cool. Um, cool. Well, so won't, won't be one. the last, won't be the last one for you. The pride of that. Kingman, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Wikipedia. Tarek yep. Skubal joins us today. What's going on, buddy? Yes, thanks for having me. It was good. I mean, it was, it was good to get off the mound. As far as the bullpen itself, I'd say it was uh, pretty average, but um, I've, I've thrown better. Um, but uh, it was good. It was good. It was fun, you know, just to be out there again and get the adrenaline spike a little bit, being around the guys. And uh, it was fun. For sure, man. And I want to, I want to start kind of with your ascension because I find your journey to be one of the more interesting on the Tigers, because you were drafted during uh, what I consider to be the tank era. I mean, we, we threw out some lineups there during that time, man. And you were <laughs> you, were, you were a ninth round pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were and not not your fault, obviously, but yeah. I mean, I was I, I watched I, I've, I've, these eyes have seen some stuff, but um, I uh, you were a ninth round pick, and you came up with Mize and Manning and Fiedo. These guys were all first round picks. Uh, you know, Mize, Manning, top prospects. Um, and your, your ascension kind of happened quickly. I mean, in 19, all of a sudden you were, you know, right in the thick of things. Was there a moment in the minor leagues? Cause it's so hard just to get to the bigs. Was there a moment in the minor leagues where you were comfortable with your journey where you felt like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a big league pitcher. I'm every bit as good as these guys. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a great question. Um, first off in eight or 19, me and Casey were teammates in high and <clears throat> I, I mean, I knew about professional baseball. I had played it for half a season, but I, I didn't quite – I knew I wanted to pitch in the big leagues, but I was like, hey, this guy just went 1-1. Let me watch what he does. You know, let me watch his day-to-day. -day. Let me watch his routine. And when I watched it, I was, like, blown away. I was like, I'm not doing any of those things, so <laughs> I need to start doing those things. Um, so I kind of hammered out a routine for myself. And then, uh, you know, I always thought I was good. Um, it didn't really become real until I was in double A pitching with those guys and um, was having success at that level too. And then I'd, I'd say like in 19, that's probably, you know, once I got to double A and I was stringing off, you know, a lot of good consecutive starts, I was like, okay, I think I can, I think I can do this, you know? And then, um, yeah. So I'd say probably by the end of 19, I was like, I, this is, I think I'm good enough, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like those guys made you better? Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it's something yeah, that we not. probably won't, we probably won't admit it to each other, but I, <laughs> I think it was always like trying to like one up each other every single day. Like, Oh, Fido went seven shot yesterday. I'm getting the ball today. Hey, watch this shit. You know, open that cuss on this. My bad. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. You're like good. watch this, like watch this. And then Casey would go, you know, eight innings two hit. I feel like every time he was out there <laughs> and then you're like, all right, I got to match that today. So it was, uh, it was fun. It was fun coming over the minor leagues together. It was fun, but, and it, and it was competitive, you know, and I think we still are like that, but now we're just yeah. all at higher levels. Yeah, for sure. And especially with Mize, I mean, Mize right away was like second start was throwing no hitters and like high A ball. And it, it, was, might have it was incredible. Double he was, yeah. His first, oh. yeah. his first start in double A was a no hitter. And 
the seven prior, if he was able to go nine innings, I bet they would have all been no hitters. Like it was insane. I was like, dude, this guy is just simply better than everyone. So, but it was, it was impressive to watch. Yeah. And obviously we were wishing the glad to see him back on the mound, you know, obviously with the yeah, way things so are Yeah. Right. We all are. Um, you know, your ninth round pick, like I said, the highest pick ever to come out of Seattle university, you get called mm-hmm. up under the most bizarre of circumstances with COVID being what it was. Do you feel, did, I mean, obviously major league debut is major league debut. Did you feel a little bit jipped that you couldn't do it in front of fans in front of home crowd at Comerica? Um, you know, I, I think I do. I don't, I don't think that uh, that year was just, I'm very thankful that I was up in the big leagues playing and uh, learning and, you know, experiencing that. But like, that wasn't even like baseball to me. You know, it wasn't really like the game of baseball. It wasn't the major league baseball experience um, from everyone that I talked to that year. They're like, Hey, we're so sorry that you're debuting this year. You know, that's yeah. kind of was the vibe, you know, like, Hey, this sucks for you. Like, you don't get the food, the hotels aren't, I mean, they're at the same hotel, but you're not allowed to do anything. So you can't enjoy cities. You know, you, your family couldn't even be at the game. My family had to watch it. This is how stupid those rules were, by the way. Um, they wouldn't let my family come to the game and get right. Them. That's right. They were watching at a restaurant, right? I yeah. So they wouldn't even let them like come to a game that no one's at, by the way. Right. So they could get them a suite where no one is, or they could get them, 12 suites every family member could be in their own suite but they made them go to a local bar and then they let me see them after the game like what what makes more sense bringing them to the game where there's we can kind of monitor the contact or taking them to a bar where people are in and out it's like whatever but yeah they couldn't watch that sucked uh but i was able to see them after the game and it was okay yeah it was as a fan it was hard for me to take anything out of that season just in terms I mean because yeah. great players great players had bad years like you know JD Martinez is having like a 600 something OPS that year it's just like the way when the season began getting the body right it was hard for me to really take anything out of it and again as a fan like I wanted to be at your your debut I wanted I wanted to give you and my the, the standing ovation when you you know you first came to America so it was kind of it was kind of tough just as an outside uh person watching that you know you got off to you know moving ahead a little bit here you know you pitch all at 21 you get to 2022, you get off to a really good start. Struggle a little bit in the summer, but it seemed like in the second half you were turning around and then the injury comes. You get the shoulder injury, miss close to a calendar year of time. Yeah. You know, people always talk about the physical and getting the body right and you know the, the rehab and stuff. But I guess from a mental standpoint, as a young pitcher, what kind of impact did that have on you kind of watch, watching the day-to-day, seeing the guys you know it, go to work in the clubhouse and you're still kind of rehabbing and going through your progressions as you try to get back in a big league mound? Yeah, I mean, it sucked. It sucked. I think it sucked. You know, it was, it was, you know, I'm glad I rehabbed in Detroit and I was able to be around the guys because you still feel like you're part of the team. Um, but when, you know, you, you kind of ride the roller coaster throughout a season, you know, highs and lows, when you're not able to go out and help in any sort, you know, that sucks more than anything. So, but I'm glad, I'm glad I was in Detroit. I think that was, that was huge for me, especially with my transition back, you know, in years past, they would send guys to Lakeland and rehab there. Um, and I don't think I'm a big fan of that because you just, like, lose connection with them. Like, you just, you know, everything's a text message now instead of seeing them face-to-face. You know, you, their first bullpens, their, you know, whatever. It was it was pretty cool. It was pretty special to me. Um, when I found my first live BP and the whole team's out there watching, I was like, mm-hmm. that's, that's pretty fucking cool, you know, that's yeah. – I don't know how many teams that happens for, you know, and I think it speaks to the guys in our clubhouse, especially. Um, but, but that type of stuff's really cool. And, I, it, and then them just walking outside for five minutes probably didn't mean a lot to them, but it meant a lot to me. And it's like, Hey, these are my guys, you know, these are the guys you go to war with every, you know, fifth day. So. Yeah. And I, and I remember noticing that at Comerica last year, I think it was when a uh, game that I was at, cause I'm a pitching guy, I go to watch warmups and, and Erod was pitching and you, Mize, Manning, uh, these guys, you guys are out there just watching, watching warmups. Like that's I, from my, my perspective, that was pretty rare for a big league team, uh, to see that. And I thought that was cool. You know, you brought up, you were rehab in Detroit, uh, and previously you said they sent guys to Lakeland. Was that something that changed when Scott Harris took over or was yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, he kind of, right when, um, I think right when he was hired, I had a phone call with him and he's like, Hey, we want you to be in Detroit all year. And I was like, I mean, I would love that. You know, I would absolutely love that. 
Um, just because it's, I mean, the facilities are great there too, but just yeah. to be around the team and, and watch the guys play. And obviously when they go on the road, you don't get to go, but, uh, and it, it does make for some long days for sure. Cause the rehab group needs to start before, you know, the guys get there. So that way you're kind of out of the way and the whole timing thing, but, um, it was awesome. That, uh, that actually kind of leads me to what my next question was going to be, because, you know, at, again, at, as a fan, perspective with the nerd stuff that I do we pay attention to analytics and prospect rankings and farm systems uh whereas you know you guys are more so focused on kind of the day-to-day you have been a part of two different administrations now you were drafted in the Avila era you're now a part of you know Scott Harris being the president what differences if any have you noticed over the last year or so in terms of maybe preparation or you know the analytics department what have you that maybe wasn't there when uh Avila was in charge well, one, we've had a ton of renovations to the kitchen, um, the weight room. Uh, I mean, the whole clubhouse, I think they're undergoing even more there. Um, but uh, I think analytics, we kind of had the same resources, but I think it even got better. Um, we were able to hire, you know, another pitching coach for us, Robin Lund, who's he's got the only PhD in the big leagues. Um, <laughs> and I think that's pretty cool. It's, it speaks to him. I mean, he's great. And he understands guys, how guys throw and he can break it down into ways that I don't even know what we're talking about. So he keeps it pretty simple with me. So I'm like, all right, cool. Um, but it's very translatable, you know, right to the field. Um, few, a few little critiques. Um, my velocity was up like a mile and a half last year, which I expected to be kind of the same this year. So it's like, and, and I did nothing different except for two changes in my mechanics. And then all of a sudden I'm getting more VLO, more VLO and, um, you know, that's just me personally, but um, I think what Scott Harris is doing too, he really gets the pitching side of, uh, of, of the game and, and just the conversations that I've had, you know, you go up to a walk, get a grab of water in between innings and he's in there, you know, in the weight room and you run, we'll talk to him for three innings about seam shifted weight like this and numbers that, and I'm just like, this guy gets it and he's bought in and he really cares. So, uh, you know, I'd say that's kind of the biggest adjustment. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, you know, you bring up analytics and I've been, especially when it comes to pitching, I'm always fascinated by how pitchers view analytics. Cause even when you had your struggles, your advanced numbers were always pretty good. You always had a pretty low FIP. You always had a good strikeout rate. Is that something that would bring you comfort when you had your struggles or was it kind of more so like, dude, I just, I just care about the final line. Yeah. I think it's kind of somewhere in between, right? Like yeah. when you're struggling, it's like, all right, where, where's the positive in this like where can is there any positive you know whether you just gave up seven and two innings like is there did i do anything good today and it's like if you gave up seven probably not you know (laughs) to be honest you probably didn't do very many good things um but yeah i think you know the luck for the luck factor like part of the game is real you know sometimes things just Mm -hmm. don't go your way and it's just very unlucky and the stat line might not reflect that so um those underlying metrics are cool but at the end of the day like You know, you can dive as deep into the analytic realm as you want. If a guy's going out there and shoving and his stuff plus number on some pitch is not good, but it's working, it's like, does it really matter? You know, does it it really matter? Um, But if you are struggling, it is good to kind of have numbers saying like, hey, dude, you are getting unlucky. You know, your batting, your BABIP is way high right now. Like, keep doing it. Um, You know, just keep tracking good days. Don't let it spiral. You know, don't let the bad days really spiral to where you have bad months. And when you have a bad month, it's like you kind of start to question if you even belong to play, you know, take the field. Was there a moment where you realized at the big league level, yeah, I belong here? Was there a specific start or, you know, did it happen quickly? Um, I don't know if there's one start, but, you know, after 2020 – that's a wash, right? I didn't pitch great. Yeah. I gave up a ton of homers, um, which is part of the game. It's part of the way I pitched, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just going to happen. Um, but 21, I had a pretty rough start to the season. And then I th- thought I had a pretty solid, you know, let's say three, four months, given a hit or miss, like bad start. Um, but I gave up a ton of home runs. And even after that season, I was – you know, I was confident in myself, but I don't really know if I was fully confident in myself. Like, hey, I actually can play here or, hey, I'm going to have a career here type thing. Um, but I think like 22, let's say about a quarter of the way in, 
um, just my development, the stuff I was working on with Fett, um, kind of all that stuff. I think that's when I, I'd probably say a quarter way in, you know, I kind of felt like, Hey, I can, I can compete with these guys. I'm no longer intimidated or caught up in the moment. Um, I'm more so focused on what I'm doing on the mound, um, which is huge, you know, just like feeling that you belong. Um, when I take them out, I felt like the guys had confidence in me that we were going to win that I, I didn't feel like that was the case in 21, whether it was or not, I didn't feel like that. So, um, yeah. And, and then obviously results kind of breed confidence in yourself too, you know, when, when stuff starts going your way. So. Yeah. And you, you had a run in 22, like you said, where you had, you had a you seven scoreless against the twins. I remember, I think you had, a, you had a career high in strikeouts against the Orioles. This was before we knew that the Orioles lineup was, was really good. Uh, and I, you, we could see the confidence uh, kind of growing with each start. And obviously last year, uh, you know, going back to the underlying numbers, I feel like there was, you know, I, I brought it up because there was a point last year where I think you had two, uh, two bad starts, not in a row, maybe, but two or three or two out they of three. In a row. They were it, in yeah, a row. it wasn't was uh, Royals. So no, sorry to bring it up. Mo, uh, Royals and, and yeah. Orleans, Kansas City, and Miami. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, two, um, two bad innings, really. To be honest, yeah, right. Well, that that's and that's. I think the underlying numbers were still really good for you in, in that aspect. Yeah. So I think it was. It, it's got to be a weird thing though, because I feel like that can work in reverse. And from an offensive standpoint, we've talked about that with Torkelson a bunch, where it's like the batted ball dad is awesome. He's hitting the ball hard. He's lifting the ball. The results just might not be there. I feel like as comforting as that might be to be like, hey, water might find its level. You still got to wait for it to find its level. So it's kind of yeah. it becomes kind of frustrating. I feel and, like, and, and that's exactly what you're saying. That's the hardest part. Is like, say Torx Torx last year, right? He has thirty mm -hmm. whatever homers, thirty two, yeah, thirty one, thirty one. I think yeah, thirty one. Yeah, I think the year prior, I think he was hitting the ball just as hard. It just wasn't. <laughs> And then you can kind of see the frustration start to spell out a little bit. I think last year was way different where he has eight homers in the first two months or something like that. And then he has 23 and it felt like, yeah, felt like all-star break happened. Then he had 23 homers. Cause I remember looking, I'm like, I might torque my at 25 this year. And then I looked up and I was like, I swear it was like two games later and he was at 27. And I was like, what the hell just happened? Like when yeah. did he hit all these homers? Um, but yeah, that's like the, that's the part you got to just like keep, Every day, keep stacking good days, keep working, stay in your routine, and kind of let things take care of itself. Because <laughs> that Kansas City start, in a matter of 13 pitches, I'd given up like seven runs. And I was like, what the fuck is going on today? You know, I'm like, ground ball here, ground ball here, bases loaded. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm cool. I can get out of bases loaded with one out. First pitch curveball, this guy is literally 0 for – no, he hasn't swung at a first pitch curveball the entire season. So Fett comes out, he's like, hey, this is how we get ahead. I'm like, all right, cool. First pitch curveball back door and down. I'm like, all right, cool. I got a free strike here. Curveball back door and down off the wall, base clearing double. I'm like, well, fuck. That's just unfortunate. Now, now he's he's got one. He's one swing, one swing for like 35 first pitch curveballs he has on the year. I'm like, well, that's just today. That's just today. And then Miami was kind of the same way. It's like if you can keep the ball in the yard, things kind of go your way because home mm -hmm. runs kind of hurt you a little bit. Solos mm -hmm. don't, but you know, two, three, one grand slams those ones hurt you um but yeah if you keep the ball in the yard things kind of generally will tend to go your way but there's some days where you keep the ball in your yard in the yard and you're like i would have rather given up four homers because at least i can live with that mm -hmm. rather than the you know the broken bat this way the bunt this way the six hole ground ball off the glove it's like oh i was i was gonna bring that up because at least with a home run you know you got beat like you can yeah. that those those seeing eye exactly. singles, the broken bat singles, where it's like I made my pitch. Like that's that's an exactly. out ninety percent of the time. Yeah, and I think against the Marlins and that starts, but you at least you at least had one or two of those. Um, yeah, that kind that that kind of led to uh, things going sideways. But the underlying numbers were always good. I want to go back real quick to that twenty twenty two season uh, because it was one that came with expectations and, and things went sideways pretty quickly. But I guess in that clubhouse. It seemed like every week there was a bizarre story coming out, whether it be more injuries to the pitching, you know, just you know, uh, obviously some guys takes leaves, leaves, of, leaves of absences. They come back, I guess. What was the mood or the vibe like in the clubhouse during a time when it kind of seemed like things were just snowballing? Like, was AJ able to keep it together? Or was there kind of some sort of, you know, genuine frustration being tossed around? Yeah, I think that everyone was frustrated. Um I don't really want to speak for anyone else because this is like yeah. personally how I felt, right? Like, I think everyone was just frustrated. You know, the injuries were absolutely un unbelievable. 
like the amount of injuries to the starting rotation was, I mean, me included was like crazy. Um, and then just what was going on, like during the games, it just felt like we couldn't ever get the right, you know, the right play or we couldn't get the third out of an inning or, you know, just like a flare this way. And then, you know, something would happen and, you know, we go to challenge and we're wrong or something, even though it's like, Hey, we watched the video. This guy's definitely out and that gets us out of the inning or just like those little things that happen in games and you lose. And you're like, we, we are not a team that loses like this. You know, we don't, we're, we're much better than the way we're playing. So I think it was definitely frustrating in that aspect. Yeah. Um, I think everyone kind of had the same vibe. Um, and it, and it honestly wasn't a ton of fun. Like losing that much sucks. Like yeah. it just sucks. Um, it's not fun. It's not fun for fans. Your videos um, are yeah. pretty funny, honestly. Thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, it's not fun for fans. Uh, I promise you it's 10 times worse for players. Uh, it's not like when we lose, we just don't care. Uh, of yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it sucked. It sucked. That whole year sucked. Um, you know, the fire of Vila chance at the games, it's embarrassing, you know, because that means your team's losing whether yeah. or not it's his fault or not, you know, I don't, it's hard to point a finger. Um, no. It's for guys, like guys our, need to talk about. <laughs> yeah. It just seemed like our bats couldn't get going and we'd yeah. pitch, you know, we pitch really well today and then we wouldn't score and then we'd score a lot of runs and we wouldn't pitch. And then mm. we do both those things and then we wouldn't play defense. It's just like, we couldn't ever piece together a full game and it, it's hard to win in the big leagues. It's hard to win games in the big leagues. Teams are good. doesn't matter who you are. Um, but yeah, it was frustrating that that year sucked for sure. Well- that, that was the most frustrating part of that team. And even last year's team with, with the improvements they made was frustrating, which was, you know, you had that really good bullpen in 22 and you know, you, yeah. you'd have a good start where you'd go six innings to earn bullpen would go three scoreless and it's two, nothing in the second. You're like, I don't know if you're going to get any runs tonight. I mean, I think they're, you know, shut out like 23 times as a pitcher. Does that have any impact on you knowing like I might need, I might need to keep the runs at a print. I mean, obviously your goal, every start is to keep runs off the board, but knowing you could take a loss if you end up giving up, you know, two or three. Yeah, I mean it I think I think it does, but the battle is to not let it. Right. You know, I think like if it happens one game, I would say no. You know, it's it's hard to hit. You know, it really is hard to hit. And if we're facing a premier arm, it's even harder to hit. You know, those guys around the big leagues can do some stuff with baseballs that is very impressive. So um I think but when it when it does get consecutive, I, I do think it gets frustrating, but at the same time, like it's not like those guys are going up there trying not to score. You know, they're, right. they're yeah. trying to score, but yeah, um, yeah, I think it, I think it does get a little bit frustrating, but I think the battle is to not let it like, don't let it come into your mind while you're pitching in the first inning. Like, Hey, if I give up one run here, say it's like run around, run on second, no outs. Like the odds of that guy scoring are pretty high. Mm-hmm. So don't, don't make this inning into something that turns into four or five, you know, uh, keep the damage at a premium. Um, so I think that that's kind of, that's where I'm at at least is like, don't let it turn into something that it's not for sure. Yeah. You know, I was, uh, I'm a Michigan fan. And so I was, I followed along with that, uh, 2019 run they made to the college world series and became a fan of Chris. That was special. That. Yeah, that was special. And, um, you know, obviously I was very happy when he got uh, hired by the tigers. I think he's done a wonderful job. What in your aspect makes him a good pitching coach? Um, one, I think he knows his shit, really. He really yeah. does. I, I think he knows his stuff. Uh, his game planning is great. Um, but also, too, he's just relatable. I think he's very relatable. Um, like, he's going to coach me different than he's going to coach Manning. He's going to coach mm. Manning different than Mize. Um, you know, Mize different than Kenta, than Jack Flaherty, all these guys. That we all kind of – he knows what makes us click and he knows what doesn't. So, like, throughout games – say my first inning goes well, my second inning goes well, my third inning, I'm, I lose something and, you know, he can see that I'm trying to find it, you know, in between innings, that inning he'll, or if it gets long enough to where he has to make a mound visit, which is hopefully not the case, but, you know, in between innings, he'll come sit down and just say like two things, you know, just say something really simple. He's like, Hey, just stay in your legs this next inning. And that for me is my cue of like, okay, I'm getting a little fatigued. I might have be going into a little early extension and that's what's causing me to spray the ball a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm not an elite command guy. I like to say I throw strikes, but I don't really throw it exactly where I want to a ton. Um, 
So he's like, yeah, just stay in your back leg. Or if he sees something, he's just like, Hey, keep your glove side strong. You know, just like little things like that, yeah. that kind of are like, Oh, that's actually what oh, the thoughts that are in my head are like, bro, just throw it over the zone. Like, right. You've done it a million times. Like just yeah. do it. And he's like, Hey, just stay in your back leg a little bit. And then you just, and your warmups, you know, or in between innings, if my velos, you know, starting to slowly go down and I don't notice it, he's like, Hey, next half inning, just really get after your warm up pitches, like really warm yourself back up. And I'm like, all right, yeah, that probably means that I'm throwing a little bit slower than usual, but just those little things. I think that's what yeah. makes him a great coach. And that's, that's really fascinating, man, because I, and I also think that's probably one of the big adjustments between minor leagues to major leagues is that in the minors, probably occasionally you can get away with, you know, just, just pump that fastball by guys. I mean, by the time sure. you get legs, Dude, everyone's hitting heater. I, I mean, yeah. you know, you, you, I mean, you, yeah. I had to learn that the hard way. I trust <laughs> right. me, I've given up 35 homers in a season. I know how to give up a fucking home run and they were all hit hard. So it's like, I, I know how to give up a home runs, but in 19, I threw 75% fa- fastball, you know, yeah. in the minor leagues yeah. and it worked, but it's like, Hey, this mm-hmm. is not going to work unless you have like this crazy 25 inch ride heater, you know, mm-hmm. like a, Joe Ryan, where he's got that VAA where it stays really flat and he can kind of just pump heaters or uh, Lance, Lance Lynn when he was really rolling. Yeah. But even yeah. he was, they say fastball, he was 60% fastball, but he was cutting and sinking and sticking four seamers and he could dot a Nats ass. So that's different than what I could do. You know, I was like, a, mm-hmm. hey, I'm going to throw this pitch right over the middle of the plate and they hit it. And I had to learn the hard way, like, yeah, they can hit him. You know, Nelson Cruz hits fastballs right down the middle, 440 feet off the fucking. The, you know at comerica the statues in left field you know he does that and he gets paid a lot of money to do that so yeah well then N- you nelson kind of learn the hard way nelson cruz hits pitches against anybody in a tiger uniform of learn learn that the hard way I over figured, i don't want to say i figured him out but i started getting him out a little bit more often so did, did he, ju- just in time for him to retire yeah exactly i think that's why <laughs> he was like hey i don't get to face scoople anymore so i might have to call it <laughs> yeah no i feel that um because yeah, he was he was one of those guys that was ageless too like late thir- somehow got better in his late 30s it was bizarre um yeah he always taking naps allegedly napping napping oh is that what it was it yeah. worked he must have yeah, been taking so. a lot of he must have been taking a lot of naps in the 2011 alcs because i remember him popping about six <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, but, napping, uh, that's the key yeah exactly he plenty of days off apparently but um, you know, one thing I wanted to uh, to bring up real quick is you know, I got hired by Barstool after Spencer Turnbull threw his no hitter. Uh, you pitched the next day, uh, yeah. in and it was kind of a unique thing because you were out west where where you went to school. <laughs> and I've um, I've always been curious. I'm always curious of the the starts that come after no hitters and perfect games. Is there any? I feel like it's going after it's like going after the really talented kid in the talent show where it's like, I mean, I'm kind of like setting myself up to be I just got the standing out. And you're like, <laughs> you're right. I'm, oh, I'm setting myself up to be the to be the guy who's going to be lesser. Now you pitch. Well, I think it was five innings two earned. I think you got the win. Yeah, we do. Because we I think we swept that series. Um, yeah. What uh, was there anything different in terms of prep that goes into following <clears throat> a performance like that? Do you watch his film to see what made him effective? I, I mean, Turnbull. I, I don't throw anything remotely close to what he does. So it's hard for me to watch what he does. Um, and I face way different hitters. You know, he's going to get way more lefties than I am. I'm going to get nine righties most of the time and maybe a left. That's what I gave up. I gave up a two run homer to Kyle Seeger, lefty, my first lefty home run um, again in that Seattle game. Um, but I had a good game that day. I think I punched like nine. I think I remember um, that was, I think it was, that was a career cool high for me. Time. Yeah. I was throwing hard too, for whatever mm-hmm. reason that year. Um, but funny enough, I actually threw the game after the no hitter this year. So that's when, right. <laughs> when yeah, so when they uh, when they threw a no hitter, now starting the next day, I go, hey, you guys remember what happened last time we threw a no hitter? <laughs> the the shitty thing is is you don't get to celebrate with the guys as much. Like I would have loved to drink and and kind of go out and have that whole you know nightlife of hey, let's celebrate this. Um, but so you don't get to do that. You know, you have like one or two beers, and then you need to start drinking water, or else you're me, me, I sweat a lot, so I, I can't afford to do that. You know, I can't afford to play hungover, um, or at least not at this point in my career. Yeah. So, uh, some guys can. I mean, there's famous stories about it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not one of those guys. I can't do it. Um, but uh, I've, had a, I've had a manager in the minor leagues tell me, like, if you can't play hungover in the big leagues, you can't play. Um, so <laughs> I haven't got to that point yet. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, you know, you don't get to go out with the guys, but – I don't think it changes um, 
I don't think it changes what you're going to do. You kind of already have your game plan set up. Um, if anything, those guys are just like wanting to get a hit to get them, you know, to just do right. it. Yeah. So they're going to be a little bit more aggressive. I think it changes their approach more than it changes mine. Yeah. But you and were I think on. I, I think I started against Toronto and I second pitch of the game or fourth pitch of the game. I think Whit Merrifield jams one up the middle and I'm like, fuck, these guys just went nine no hit yesterday and I'm four pitches in. I've already given up a hit. Like, is it that hard? Um, yeah. But yeah, those days are always special. They're a ton of fun to be a part of. They're a ton yeah. of fun to watch. Um, I think I'm more nervous for the guy than the guy even knows. Mm-hmm. You know, when I'm sitting there in the dugout, I'm like, my heart's like, and my hands are shaking. And I'm like, I don't even want to go by this guy because I bet he can just feel my energy, you know, like being nervous for him. Um, yeah. But they're a ton of fun. But I don't, I don't think it changes anything that I'm going to do, to be honest. Yeah. For what it's worth, you were lights out that day against Toronto, too. You, you after yeah. that, after that Merrifield single, you were great. Um, yeah, I pitched trans- well after no hitters. Right. Yeah, end. exactly. We need to throw more no hitters. I think you'll you'll yes. get rolling again. Let me start um, after every no hitter after this. Yeah, uh, transitioning into this year now, <laughs> you brought up uh, Kent Maeda, Jack Flaherty, two free agent signings. Have you had any interaction with those guys uh, thus far? I mean, obviously spring training, you guys just reported, but have you talked to them at all? Yeah. So Jack came out last week. Um, when the group was a little smaller and I was able to watch him kind of go about his business. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to work with him. Um, Mm -hmm. I think he's just a little quiet right now and I'm excited to get to like know his whole personality. It's early. He's meeting, he's, you know, trying to figure out where he needs to go to get here and you know, where this is, what time this is, you know, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I'm excited to get to work with him. You know, we're locker mates and uh, we talk more than just baseball, basketball, whatever. Um, Today we had a pretty lengthy 20 minute discussion on our top five basketball players of all time. And that was a ton of fun uh, just to get into that. But, uh, Kenta, I'm excited to, you know, I've watched Kenta a lot. I I think I've only played, I've only watched Flaherty once live. Um, but I've watched Kenta a lot and I I like the way he pitches. Mm -hmm. Um, he refuses to throw heaters. That's where I was kind of learning like, Hey, (laughs) stop throwing fastballs as much, you know, especially in hitters counts, you know, pick and choose when you're going to do that. Um, but he's a good player, man. He's got really good stuff. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's done it in big games too, you know, postseason. I think he has a world series ring, doesn't he? Oh, uh, was he? Um, no, I think he was on the twins in 20, but he's pitched in the world series. So pitched in the world series. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. You know, his translator's yeah. awesome too. Funny. Yeah. Um, and he has like this masseuse that I'm excited to get to work with. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's supposed to have God's hands. So I'm excited to oh, hopefully, hopefully get those hands on me and, and fix yeah. some problems. Yeah, no, he's all. I mean, he's always spun the ball really effectively. My, yeah, his, his, yeah. Sli- his slider splitter is really, really good. Yeah, and that actually just as again as a pitching uh, a geek here, I wanted to go back to some in I believe t- early twenty twenty one. You had a changeup. You went to that split changeup for a minute, and then stupid idea. And then you went back. Was yeah to kind of talk me through that transition because I do remember early on in that season you went back to your regular changeup grip. Was that? something you uh, like appropriated from Casey or was that uh, something that you came up with on your own? So after 20, uh, my changeup was okay. Um, it, it, I think the whiff rate was pretty high, but I just wasn't confident in it. It was uh, if you want to get nerdy, like vertical break and all that stuff. Um, my changeup would have more vertical break, have more ride than my four seamer, but it was just five, 10 miles an hour slower. Okay. Um, and it would have less horizontal. So it was basically like, to me, like a extremely backspun slow four seamer, which translates to batting practice um, <laughs> in my eyes. So in the off season, I was like, Hey, I want to kill vertical break on that. You know, I, I feel like I have to pronate a ton to get it to go the way it's supposed to go. Um, and I'm not very good at that. Um, I'm just like, just my throwing, I'm, I'm more of a supinator than a pronator. I have a hard time getting to the inside of the baseball. Um, some guys are really good at it. I'm not. Um, so I went to drive line and I was like, hey, I need to get rid of this changeup. It, I think it stinks. I'm not, I'm not confident in it, so I don't even want to ever throw it in the game, even if it's getting good results. It's like every time you throw it, it's like touching something. You know, It's like playing hot potato. Like, am I going to get burned on this one? Am I going to get burned on this one? And then you get burned and you're like, well, yeah, I shouldn't be throwing this pitch anyways. So I go to drive line and I'm like, they're like, Hey, you should try a splitter. I was like, all right, sure. So I get to drive line. I'm throwing a splitter. It has good numbers. I'm like, all right, yeah, I can get the feel for this pitch. Um, couldn't 
you know, didn't, couldn't get the feel for it. Just like was throwing it, didn't have a ton of confidence. And then um, I slowly started to like start backspinning the ball, backspinning my splitter a little bit more. And then I wasn't even throwing it anywhere remotely around the zone. So it became a useless pitch for me anyways. And then uh, I was scuffling and I actually, I started in at a Yankee stadium gave up a ball to John Carlo. That was like hit 120 off the fence and right. Gave up a homer to judge, gave up a homer to uh, fuck Clint Frazier. And I'm like, and I'm out of there after the fourth inning. And, and I'm like, Holy shit. I, this, this is like a point in my career where I'm like, I, I need to, I need to get sent down. I, I don't think I belong here anymore. And that's when AJ and Feder call me in the office and they're like, Hey, you got to stop, you know, calm down, take a deep breath understand that you know things aren't going your way right now but we still have a ton of confidence in you but there's one thing you got to stop throwing the splitter you need to go back to your change it and then uh kind of from that on then on out i became a much better pitcher um, yeah I, I don't know from that yankee stadium from that yankee start to the end of the season i'm curious to see what my numbers would be um comparing them comparing the two but uh yeah from then on out i kind of went back to the change up and then in the off season I tinkered a little bit more actually with Bobby Dahlbeck. He was a really good pitcher at U of A. Yeah. You know, I mean, in, on that college world series run they had, yeah. um, he showed me his grip. And then, uh, last year, um, Scott Harris was actually big into like the seam shifted weight change up. He's like, Hey, this is, I think this is a thing for you. Um, and then AJ and, and Robin and Fetter kind of got me on that program of like learning how to do it. And then now that's kind of my change up. So, uh, yeah, I mean that's a long-winded answer to that question. But, no, I, I dude, I, yeah. I love that. Though. I love, I love. Yeah. I'm so fascinated by the mechanics of pitching and, and just by yeah. and especially with 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 the data that we have access to now, uh, compared, mm-hmm. which is so much different than any other era. I love the adjustments that guys are making, and I, you see that with the elite organizations that you guys get traded from one place to another, and they say, "Hey, the spin rate on my slider went way up. My the velo on my fastball went way up." You know, my hope is that uh, you know the Tigers can become one of those, uh, you know, one of those organizations. So right now, I think we are, I mean, I think it seems like, it. I yeah. think, I mean, our, our pitcher from the pitching department here, um, the guys we have in the minor league are special too. That's you what know, I'm the hearing. Guys, the guys that are coming up are, you watch their shit and you're like, Whoa, like that, that's got way more life than anything I possess in my left arm. So I'm like, that's, you know, they got, they got stuff, you know, there's guys that are coming up that have, you know, true legit stuff. I, that's why I think I'm excited for this year, especially is like, not only do we have very good pitching, I think that we have also very good pitching. If anything happens, you know, like the 22 yeah. scenario yeah. where it's like, if anything happens, that next guy up is going to be very, very good too. So for sure. I think that's and the most exciting part. I don't know exactly how the rotation is going to shape out, but like, if it is the way I projected, like, I think, I think Reese Olsen's a major league pitcher, you know, I mean, he could, you know, he, yeah, he could stuff is, play. It's like that stuff was really good, especially down the stretch last year. I played catch with him today. I'm like, bro, like you gotta get it. You gotta, I gotta get one of the bullpen catches over here. Cause like this slider, it looks like it's not going to go. And then it goes and it's right in your palm. And it's like, dude, I, I can't take very many more of these ones, yeah. um, but he's got, he's got some legit stuff. He's got mm-hmm. his, like legit, legit weapons. Um, and he throws 95. So that yeah. also helps. Yeah. Uh, you know, coming into the year right now, obviously expectations for you are high. I've looked at different, uh, you know, sports books though. People should obviously be paying attention to DraftKings, our new sponsor. You're, you're yeah. consistent. You're consistently, you know, kind of in the top 10 in terms of, of odds for the American League Cy Young coming into the year. Do you go into a, a season, like, do you think you're one of the best pitchers in the American League? Or is it just, like, start-by-start start thing for you? Yeah, I mean, I I think I'm very confident in myself. Um, you know, I don't – I'm not the guy that's going to go out and say, hey, I'm the best pitcher in the big leagues right. and you guys need to give me my respect. I'm not going to do any of that. Um, I think a lot of that comes from, like um, – your ego. And I don't think that's, I actually think that's like fake confidence when you have to go out and say, I'm going to be this guy. Or like, I got asked the question today, like, do you want to be known as the ace of this team? And I'm like, what, what does that matter? I want to be known as a really good fucking pitcher. That's what I want to be known. As. I want to be known as a guy that goes about his business every five days where teams aren't excited to go to the, you know, step in the box. That's the guy I want to be. Um, so that's kind of how I look at it. I don't, you know, it, it's funny in media and all that stuff. They'll love you when you're good and they'll bash you when you're bad. So it's like, whatever. 
you know, yeah. it doesn't, I don't really care too much about it. It's cool. You know, it's cool. The respect mm-hmm. not is obviously cool. Um, but as far as the whole tags of, you know, you're going to be a future Cy Young, it's like, Hey, I need to string together a healthy season and make 30 starts. And then we can kind of start talking about that. I, I feel like that's only in a lot of ways. That's only forcing pressure on you too, to kind of read into that. Oh, stuff. for sure. For you're, sure. It, like if you, Setting you start up ex- reading into it, it's a yeah. rabbit hole, man. You know, you can be on TikTok for an hour and a half. You can also do that, you know, by Googling your last name. So you got to stay off that shit. You know? Yeah. So, um, no, exactly. No, that's, and that's, I, I figured that. I think that it's an interesting point you make. Cause you know, like the, the guy who says he's the smartest guy in the room is very rarely ever the smartest guy in the room. You know I mean? There's, there's something 100%. to be said about, about quiet confidence. And as far as this team is concerned, I feel like last year's, uh, team, how they played down the stretch kind of coincided with the way you pitched 18 and 10 in September, uh, as a team, you know, you were American league pitcher of the month. Did you, did you feel, was it noticeable the improvement that that team made throughout the season? Cause I, early in April, it seemed like this was and not going off the rails, but it just seemed like it wasn't going to be a very good season. Did it, did it feel like there was improvements, substantial improvements from April to towards the end of the season? You know, I think we, I think we started to get a little healthy, you know, towards the end of the season, obviously um, the Riley green injury sucked. Uh, Just the flukeness of that whole thing um, obviously sucks, but we also just started, you know, in in April, it's hard, you know, when you have a team that everyone's battling for a spot every single day, you know, in camp when there's a lot of open spots, it's just like, once you make the team, I feel like guys are like, like I made, like I felt like that in uh, 21, you know, I'm grinding every day to make every start. I'm like, not saying like, I'm just like the pressure is on. You need to perform if you want to make the team, you know, that's the kind of, so it's, I think there's kind of that like little, like, whoa, like I finally made it and we settled in um, as a team. Um, but April's in general haven't been great to us. I think the past two years, I don't think we've been very good in April. So that has to change one this year. That has to, we got to be a better team in, in April. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think we started to click as a team. You know, we started to gel. I think every time someone took the ball, we also started pitching really, really well too. You know, our bullpen was great all year, but it was even emphasized in the month of September, you know, mm-hmm. and starting pitching, you know, we were able to go a little bit deeper into games and, you know, our rotation was, was pretty solid. You know, Erod was solid every single time out. Um, Reese Olsen had an outstanding September too. Um, and and so, Sawyer, Sawyer came up and, and yeah. pitched great, you know. So, I think that also speaks volumes to our coaching, you know, our, our pitching staff, you know, the the coaching staff we have on the pitching side. Like, when guys come up, it's hard. It's hard. There's a lot of shit thrown at you. You have the nerves are crazy. Um, when guys come up and have success, I think it speaks volumes about the guys that we have on the team and obviously the coaching staff, just getting them as comfortable as possible right away because we know that we need them to be confident for them to be good that day. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's kind of what happened in September. We just, we started playing, you know, a better brand of baseball too. Yeah. They also gave you the most ridiculous schedule in April. I mean, you guys, you guys opened against a team that started 13 and zero, and then you went, you went yeah. to Houston, you had to go to, you, you know, home against, uh, Boston, Boston. who was no scout. You had to go to Toronto. Um, yeah. yeah, I know. It's, I think the last few years, like, I think in all three of AJ's years so far, they, April's gotten off, you know, horrible start. Sometimes it's scheduling. Sometimes it's not. I, I mean, looking at the team as a whole, you know, cause the way that fans view it as far as like the, you know, year two of Harris and, you know, is it the beginning of, you know, the rebuild two, whatever, whatever it is. I mean, like, just where do you feel like, you know, do you feel like this is a confident group going into 24? Do you feel like this is, a, you know, it's playoffs is the main goal right now? Yeah, I, th- I think winning the division is kind of the pretty good murmur around the clubhouse. Um, that's kind of where everyone has their eyes set. Um, you know, if you look at how we played the division last year, too, we, I mean, we were damn good within our division. You know, I think we had the best record by far. I mean, even the Twins, I think we we handled them pretty well. Um, so it's it's continued to, to do that, right? Like, continue to beat the teams in your division. Um winning series every set, every time you play them, you know, that's kind of the goal. And then, you know, the AL East is the team, you know, the, they kind of beat up on us last year. Um, I think our record was pretty poor. I think we got swept by Baltimore twice, lost five of six to Boston. Um, we may have split with the Yankees. Um, Toronto, I think kind of handled us pretty well. So, you know, maybe it was four two advantage them there. Um, so we got to handle that, you know, and then Tampa swept us. And then I think we only beat them once, six out of seven, they beat us. Yeah. So it's like, we got to beat that division up a little bit better. Um, you know, and those are really good teams too, but uh, you got to win. 
you got to win. You got to win those games. Um, but I, I think that that's kind of the thing is like win our division. And how do you do that? You win today's game. You know, AJ says this all the time, win today's game. When you win today's game, you know, you can start having winning weeks. When you start having winning weeks, you start having winning months. When you start doing that, you know, you find yourself right in the thick of things, you know, in September. And fuck, man, you get in the playoffs. Look at Arizona. You right. just don't know. You just don't know, you know, like when Arizona came and played us, if you would have told me, hey, this guy, this team's going to be in the World Series, I would have said, no chance. You know, we just yeah. played San Diego. Like San Diego just rolled in with Machado, Tatis, Soto, Cronenworth, uh, Kim. You know, that lineup was insane. You know, Gary Sanchez, um, you know, that lineup just rolled in. And I'm like, I mean, the Diamondbacks are good. They're a scrappy team. I'm not saying they weren't good, but. I would imagine, you know, a team like San Diego to to be in the World Series or LA or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah. San, San Diego had one of the strangest teams in baseball history last year. Like they were they were that was a <clears throat> roster. Uh and they were just they were just not clutch. They were like one in twelve or something in, in and that's uh, that, like that team, um, they obviously have way more names than we did in twenty two, but like that's the same like what they just went through was probably just as frustrating for us in twenty two, yeah. just in different magnitudes, right? Like it was the same shit where it was just like, how, how did that, how did San Diego not make the postseason last year? Yeah. You know, was, Weird how it works. Well, man, yeah. uh, we're rooting for you, dude. I mean, we're behind you guys. You, I mean, you, I, I can't, I can't wait to watch you pitch this year. Can't, can't wait to watch what, what, what I believe is going to be an updated Comerica park. Uh, yeah. I'm season. excited to get up there. I yeah. A ton of sure. It should be fun. But um, thank you for joining me today. Best of luck uh, on the season, dude. We'll be rooting for you. Be there at Comerica on opening day and uh, go out and show up, buddy. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you very much to Scooby for joining us. That was great. He was very cooperative. That was a ton of fun, honestly. And as I was waiting for our, our recordings to upload, we just kind of sat there and talked baseball for a few minutes. So, um, yeah, I uh, I felt very good about that. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Uh, we will be back next week with another interview. As I said at the beginning, hit that like button, subscribe button, put all the fixings on it. Make sure to spread the word. Let's uh, – Let's uh, get that positive word of mouth up, up, up. Thank you very much, guys. Love you. Peace and happiness.